Hello YouTube, this is Dark Vigilante bringing you a video on how to set up Resident Evil or Biohazard Outbreak files number one and two for the internet. Once again, being able to play this on an emulator that's going to connect to a modern server that will allow you to play online once again. Now this is one of my favorite Resident Evil games in the PlayStation 2 era and we can finally play it again mostly in English and online with your friends with random people that may be on the server whatever the case may be you can now do this once again now i'm going to go through all the steps but before i do that i want to give a slight disclaimer i'd like to say for starters that please don't pirate these games secondly i would like to say that none of this guide is my own again i'm going to leave the links for the original work in the description i take no credit for it all i'm doing is explaining it in my own words and in a way that hopefully will be easy for people to understand because it's not 100 percent clear what you need to do to get this working in my opinion via the text guide i did get it to work but not everybody will be able to by using that text guide and i'm just sharing this so we can get more people in the community to play the game Without further ado, let's get started. So in the description, you're gonna find links to all of these files. And the first thing we're gonna start with is the emulator itself. That'll be the first one I will put in the description. Let's go ahead and set that up, show you what that's gonna look like. I tend to leave all these options enabled. You don't have to, but I would suggest leaving these two enabled. The reason for that is the program itself does need these two. And if you disable them and you don't have them, it's likely not to work. Obviously the shortcuts, you don't have to have those if you don't desire them. Next step, you're gonna choose where you're going to install these files. And while I'm letting this install, make sure that you had all those files that are in the description extracted, put them all in one folder, put them somewhere where it's really easy to find. That way you don't have to go searching for all this stuff because remember, we're gonna to have to move all this stuff around. We're gonna to have to use it and it makes it a lot easier if it's on one area that's not gonna to be too hard to find. So once you've downloaded and installed the emulator. You also need to get the BIOS, which these files are the BIOS right here. So you can check mine versus yours. And you're also gonna need copies of the actual ISOs for the games. This is file outbreak two, or file two for outbreak. And this is the original outbreak file number one. So once you have those, we also wanna get the English patch so that we can understand, or at least so I can understand rather, and you can see here file number one translation and file number two translation, and also the Delta patcher itself so that you can actually patch the ISO files. Now we're gonna do that before we go any further. And the reason is number one, patching these files is not only gonna change it to English, but it's also gonna give us a DNAS pass to bypass the security features that the PS2 originally had and allow us to access the new servers that allow us to play online. So this is paramount, you have to do this. Unfortunately, it is in English. I know other people may want it to be in a different language for now. These are the only ones I know that are currently working. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that. Let's go into the Delta Patcher and then we're gonna go into deltapatcher.exe. We're gonna run this as admin. You need to run this as admin. It's very important to do that. We're gonna to go to original file. We're gonna hit open. We're gonna find our outbreak. I've already done this one, so I'm gonna show you this one. It's the same exact process for both. There's our original file. Here's our, our patch. We're gonna find our patch. In this instance, I'm using file two, so obviously I would pick file two translation patch. I don't wanna keep the original file because I don't care, because once it's patched, that's how I'm always gonna use it afterwards. You can click that option if you want to, that's up to you. Just remember that you're gonna to have to know which is which. And if you pick the wrong one, it's not gonna work. And then go ahead and hit apply patch. Now this can take a little bit of time. So while this is going on, I'm gonna show you where the server is located. You need to go to this website right here. Again, link in the description. And you're gonna go ahead, let me back up a bit. You're gonna go ahead and hit register. I agree to these terms. Please fill out this information. Now your username and your password you need to remember. So don't make them random and don't forget them. The reason why you need to remember them and you shouldn't make them random is that's how we're gonna log on to the actual server for Resident Evil and actually play. So therefore put those in and then last but not least, put in your capture code. Now please pay attention to this at the bottom. It says enter the code without the first and the last number. What that means is, for example, this threw some people off, which is why I'm explaining this. This is how you would enter that code. Not only is it case sensitive, it's also skipping the first and last number. So once you've registered, check your email for a confirmation, click on the confirmation, and then you're 100% set up, ready to go. By then, your patch will be applied and it will be all successful, hopefully. 
I hope you don't get any errors. Usually it doesn't error out. I haven't had it error out on me, so you should be fine as long as you follow those steps. And now that's patched. Next step is we need to actually configure the actual emulator at this point. So let me go ahead and open that up, show you what that looks like. And you're going to see something similar to this. First time configuration. System default for the language select selector, excuse me, you can pick whatever language suits you. Hit next. Now, if you've already installed this program before, or if you get this dialogue message, go ahead and hit overwrite. The reason we want overwrite is we want this to be a brand new setup, and we want all the settings to be from this particular version of PCSX2. It may or may not work if you don't do this, so I'm going to hit overwrite. Now, right away, you can see here Dev9 is one of the plugins that we're going to use. Right here is our Dev9 plugin. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hit open in Explorer. Now what this is, is this is the plugins folder. Go back to your folder where your plugin is, go ahead and hit copy, and you're going to copy this right into the plugins folder. And the reason we're going to do this is it just makes our life a little bit easier when we go forward a little further here. This is the one we want, it's selected, and we can just go ahead and hit next. Now we need to put our BIOS in its proper folder. So as you can see here, I have the BIOS files right here. I'm going to go ahead and hit copy, come back to the emulator, open an explorer. I'm going to paste those files in right here, and then I'm going to go ahead and close this folder, refresh list. There's our Japanese BIOS, which is necessary to play Japanese games, which is exactly what we're doing. And then finally hit finish. It'll take just a second. You'll get a debug menu and basically a main menu for the emulator itself. Now we have to do a few more things in terms of configuration to get this to work properly. The first thing we're going to do is go to the memory card selection. In the memory card section, you're going to see here two memory cards. We don't want either of these memory cards. So what we're going to do is once again, open in Explorer. Here's our memory cards that we just saw. We want our custom memory card that we downloaded from the description to be put in there instead. So we're going to go ahead and paste that over and you'll see it there. We can now close this, go back to the emulator and refresh like usual, refresh list, unused cards. You're going to see it right here. Go ahead and select drag and drop this to port number one. So yours should look just like this and it's formatted. It's going to say yes, and it's ready to go. Hit apply and then hit okay. We're going to go to config once again, plugin settings. Let me drag it over and just leave this the way this is. Don't enable this HDD unless you know exactly what you're doing and you have a good understanding of how the emulator works. If not, leave it the way it is. Go to options for the uh, enabled ethernet. You're going to see this page here that pops up and you're going to want to change yours to look exactly like mine. So yours is going to look like this when you first look at it. For the DNS one IP, uncheck auto and type in this IP address. After you're done, hit apply, hit apply once again here. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and configure our controllers. Now our controllers, we want to go to plugin settings once again, and we want to go to pad number one if we're using an actual controller. Now you can set this up to use the keyboard. That's completely up to you. You can do that any way you want, and you can change that here. So you just click on each one and you either push in your keyboard setting that you wish to have, or in my case, I'm using an Xbox 360 controller, whatever the case may be, just go ahead and set that up here. Next up, we're going to want to load up our ISO finally. So we're going to go to ISO selector, browse. I'm going to go ahead and pick file outbreak number one, or just outbreak. And we'll select that system, boot CD DVD full. Let me bring this back over. Okay, and hopefully I've changed the volume level right there because it was super duper loud for me. You can change the volume in the emulator too, just so you guys know. You don't have to do it the way I just did it and get your eardrums blown out. <laughs> so start button. Now keep in mind too that the 
buttons on the Japanese games are backwards from US games. So their affirmative or their next button is always going to be the circle button for the PS2. So just remember that. You can reverse those on your controller or you can do whatever you want to set it up um, controller wise. But just keep in mind that theirs is a little different from ours. Go ahead and hit next. You're going to want to hit yes for a .NET file has been found. It's going to find your memory card, obviously. We want to hit previous connection. We want to hit next. Wait for that little sound that you just heard, which is the menu sound for Resident Evil. And then you're going to hit the circle button, or the equivalent of the circle button, on your controller. And then it'll load up. Whatever you map the circle button to is what you're going to press. Okay, now your login is obviously going to be the login that you created on that website that we visited earlier who runs and maintains this server. So I'll skip through this real quickly. Okay guys, and once you get those both filled out, make sure that you go into login and then go ahead and hit uh, your circle, your equivalent circle button on enter lobbies. It's a loading in this game <laughs> for the network to get set up. Okay, as you can see here, I already have an ID. It will ask you to make an ID if you're not registered. And the reason is, is it registers it with the server. It is going to be in Japanese, guys. I have no idea what that says. It's probably just a bunch of random letters. But this is one of the things that has not been translated. So just keep that in mind. If you want a translation, look it up online and figure it out. Go ahead and hit OK when you're done. And then you can pick between East and West Town. I'll just pick West Town for free mode. Hit circle to continue or the equivalent of circle. Now you can go to your room list. You can basically at this point you just pick whatever you want. The areas are the different levels in the game. So obviously area one is going to be level one. And then you can pick a room. As you can see, there it doesn't look like anybody's playing this right now. So go ahead and hit that. And we'll circle once again. You can change the room title. You can do whatever you want. Again, in Japanese, but you can name it whatever you want. Password, four players, whatever difficulty. Uh, friendly fire if you want it. You can pick whichever characters you want. And then we're going to go ahead and hit start game just to show you that we can actually get into the game. And here you go. We're in the actual game. We're playing online. So I hope this guide helped, guys. If it did, please leave me a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I hope you guys have a good one. And I'll see you next time.